Kilpailussa mukana Ramirent. Kotikatsomon eväät tarjoaa kotipizza. What's up everyone and welcome to the round two back nine here in Turku at the Prodigy Disc Pro Tour. This coverage is brought to you by Natural Born Disc Offer. We appreciate you guys sharing it with us here at Gatekeeper Media. And this commentary is brought to you by Parked Podcast. My name is Mitch Phillips. Joining me is Hayden Ricard. The weather, calming down a little bit. Just a little, but it was rough at the start. Yeah. The, the difficulty you see on our, our card here, the putting. Yes. It's, some it, some worse than others, but definitely everyone felt it at some point during the round. Yeah. And Seppo playing really well. Yeah. I mean, one bogey on the front nine. Mm-hmm. Another player playing well. Vinyl Makala, familiar face here to the Prodigy Pro Tour. Making a charge. Vile Ocas, minus five on the front nine. Lucas can do what he did on the back nine. Got a minus six there, just making a charge yeah. even through the rain. So hopefully we see Lucas, you know, continue what he did in round one. Yeah, that was that was fantastic golf yeah. that he's playing. Went but, six down on the back nine. Yeah. Round one. So start with hole ten. Yeah, hole ten, par three, two hundred and seventy nine feet. Just getting out to the gap is the key and not hitting a tree early. Yeah. That's the hardest thing. And we saw round one, a lot of them hit early. Yeah, not Just hitting a tree on this hole is pretty difficult. But yeah. if it can be further down the fairway, obviously it's better. You think we see a little bit of a standstill? Yeah. We saw Lucas go for this FX2 play, very overstable fairway. It's kind there of for sure. Yeah. Yeah, Oof. big slip. But <sighs> same reaction. Yep. Yeah, it's definitely there. It flexes all the way back, but it's, it's throwing a fast disc on a very short hole. Looking to go maybe a similar line. This looks to be an overstable fairway as well here from Yona. This looks, yeah. Oh Perfect. my gosh. Oh, what a great shot. Yes. Yona Heinonen giving the fist bump on the card. That was perfect. And to be able to do it right after Lucas, who's tried that twice now. Yeah. Just kind of like, hey, bro. Hey, I did it better. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah. Yeah, that definitely felt good for him. Yeah, only two strokes separating them, so hopefully we can, you know, maybe see a battle begin between Lucas and Yona. Oh. Disking down, so it definitely was a little bit slower, but yes. still going for that overstable finish. Forehand here from Elias. We've seen this work out before. Mm -hmm. Late flip. Yeah, fights all the way through inside nice. the circle. Great shot there. Forehand roller. Wow. With an F7, nonetheless, it's a very understable disc. So it's going to curl really quick. Just, gosh, what he needs. I didn't realize he kicked oh that far. Gosh. Did you? No, I thought he kicked right. Yeah. Mm, but continues forwards. And it forwards and again. But good kick off that last tree. Going to be that edge of circle, maybe a little further for the par save. Oh, it's just right out of his hand. Knew it. Yeah, it's a weird distance of commitment. So if you put it two nose up, you hit the trees. If it's not high enough, then it's too low and you hit the tree. I mean, yeah, we'll see the step putt. It's a little bit low. Yeah, step putt's one of those things when it's on, it's it's hard to beat, but I feel like there's a lot of moving parts in most people's step putt, and the timing is a hard thing to really, like, find your end point where everything connects. It's one of the most, I think, one of the difficult putts that you'd have to bring into play. Yeah, it's... And then Lucas also you got the, you have the straddle putt. Yeah, as you see, Lucas kind of more of the falling putt from that, that range, kind of letting that momentum carry forwards. Good birdie. Yep. He needed that one. Yeah, great stuff there. And hopefully us. his grip is coming back in. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's the more conditions confidence. are drying out for sure. It's a bogey from our leader. Got to stop the bleeding. Mm -hmm. I mean, he does have a good stroke. Lead. Yeah. It's, it's tough to take a bogey on such a short hole, but I mean, you see two of our players. It's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's just getting out that gap is the hardest part. Yep. And we talked about a battle between Lucas and Yona, and just like that, two stroke swing. Yep. They are tied for third. Let's move on to hole 11, par four, 689 feet. Quite a narrow fairway. You're going to see a lot of players throw over the top. Spike Kaiser try to land on that left side edge to set themselves up for another backhand into this green. The goal is going to be to get far enough to where you can access the gap of those trees um, and not push too high where the, the glide of the disc is going to carry you out of bounds left. Yeah, we saw in round one, one of the stakes almost be a hero and stop a player from going out of bounds. But this rain, I'm, I'm interested to see how these discs land. They get pretty far down the fairway. I just don't know what's back on that right edge. They might have some kind of look, but a lot of players, if you don't put too enough on it, enough height, it's where you do it. But I mean, yeah. you put too much height, you go out of bounds. So it's just kind of in between. I like the forehand play here a lot. If you, you have see the his grip, yeah, going with the power grip. That is. Oh, and it slips out, but it continues quite far. Oh my! Funny gosh. you mentioned his grip right before that happens, but that was. I just saw it at the last minute there, yeah. and I was like, "That's very interesting." Okay. If you ever noticed, uh, you probably know this. Yes. Paul Macbeth yes, does know. that as well, mm -hmm. which is very interesting. Uh, it's super uncomfortable, but it's, for most people. But if you can kind of lock that in, if your hand bends that way. It can, can just bring a ton of power. I'm sure it can. Even more if snap. If Paul can do it, it, I mean, I mean, he's got a good forehand. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say so. Yeah, oh, just just a little bit. Pretty pretty solid. Just a little. But yeah, Seppo. I noticed it. I was like, oh, interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't don't know if you necessarily need that on this hole. And the S roller from Seppo. I saw the top of the disc, and I thought it did say D4, but. That was very interesting approach. I mean, I can understand it. You're not ever going to bring it into play. No. And if you really hit that far enough left, let it work right. I mean, you're you're pushing the gap. Yeah, you're, you're going really far. But with Seppo's distance, I mean, he has the ability to throw a spike, spike over the top, yeah. be in a great spot. He has no issue with that. Maybe he just gets a little bit bored. <laughs> <laughs> Another spike. I don't know. Oh, this is perfect oh from Alias. Gosh. Yeah, that's Good what he comeback. was trying to do off the tee, showing yeah. that distance control. I like his forehand, too. You can see... When he throws a faster disc, he pushes it a little bit further out in front of him. Yep. Lets him be able to really control the nose angle all the way out of his hand. It's it's a thing of beauty. Let's see what Lucas has here after getting caught up. And I like seeing more forehand dominant players. Yeah. It's, it's brings it into a different play play style. Yeah. Lucas catching. Does he get enough? Yeah. Just a little. Mm. I'll be right side, maybe out of pretty obstructed putt but you know we saw that we talked about it in the, the first two stops of this tour is there really isn't a lot of forehand dominant players in europe um, and maybe it's just what we're seeing but from our exposure and what we've seen so far which i would assume those of you watching yeah, most have, have of a the similar, european right most of the european have this really great touch backhand like you saw Seppo going to the roller going to a, a perfect tombstone tombstone that that actually might be the most perfect tombstone i've ever seen on coverage there's a uh, group of people from around around where we live here in the Atlanta, Georgia area that are obsessed with tombstones and post pictures of them, have a protractor out there. <gasps> that was screaming so close. the basket was Yona. Yeah. I'm not oh, that obsessed with tombstones. Some people I'm not are. Either. But it's it's a community out there. I mean, are you going to the cemetery? Those kind of tombstones? No, no, no. Only discs. Okay. Only discs. Great touch just, here. Just wondering where we were going there. Gosh, we're stopping it. We're stopping the train. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, and a very obstructed putt here for Lucas. Yeah, I think he's just trying to get out. Yeah. As far as he can with a jump putt. I mean, he's, he's got a he's look. high. Yeah. From the jungle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good amount of power from that Good standstill. Bid. Just jump. Oh, 
another step putt. Yeah, I mean, the step putt's a good thing, too. We've talked about it a lot, but the speed control is what mm -hmm. makes it such a good thing. You're not putting a lot of spin. There's not a lot of, like, forward momentum on it. It kind of hits a point and slows down. And it on these greens that are so fast, it's a good thing to have. Just low there for Yona. And Ellis to clean up. Good par save. Yes, back nine's going well for him so far. Couple more strokes to get back to even par. You can see the frustration there from Yona wanting to find another birdie. Good par between Lucas and Seppo. And moving on to hole 12, par three, 400 feet. This one is getting as far down the fairway as you can. And it's gonna sit in between these two giant trees and just be careful going on the green. Don't wanna to skip too far past the basket onto the lower level. Yeah, being at 400 feet, being downhill, you see a lot of players Disc chain. down. Yeah, they disc down maybe. Especially in the rain. Right, lean on the glide a little bit more. The rain's thankfully let up, but the grass is definitely still wet. These tee pads are still wet. So there's a lot of factors. Catches right. Hopefully it didn't drop him straight down I think into it that, did. but it, it, it did look like it did. Mid-range here from Elias as well. Just a little bit inside. Fights its way through though. It's going to be an interesting upshot. I mean, the speed control off the tee is one thing, but when you're that close, it's like that kind of in-between jump putt, but soft throw is going more of a hyzer play here. Understable so mid-range. I like more this. More left. Yeah, maybe a little more left than he wanted to be, but the the idea is definitely there with the understable putter or mid-range as Seppa looks to have a pretty beat-in putter. Yeah, this looks great. Oh, and but catching catches, that. Yeah, that depth perception from yeah, that tree really there. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it's going to be interesting footing and see if they have a look out. But, yeah, as we expected here, that jump putt. <laughs> oh, and it's. Oh, he's heavily guarded. That is a I mean, rough You can't even spot. stand up all the way. No, you can't. Those are those ones that you just pitch out and try to get as much as you can. He's, yeah. but he, I think he's going for it because he can probably see it. Yeah. Yep. Found a window, put himself right there about 10, 15 feet. That's into a comfortable range. Yep. Yeah. You can see these limbs, of this tree going all the way to the ground. Is there a word for a tree bush? Like it's like in between a shrub shrub. That's what we're looking for. This is kind of a shrub, tall shrub. <laughs> Full stretch out here from Lucas. And it's going to be a lot of par looks here. Yeah. Trying to capitalize as Yona with a oh, big oh, oh. par putt. Huge putt. We talked about the difference of his, you know, aggressive step putt. That was or aggressive. Thing, but you see his caddy just excitement Smiling. on him. Smiling. Yeah. What a freaking putt, my dude. If that misses, it's going 40 long. Yeah, but it's going far. He had the confidence that was never going to miss right out of his hand. Oh, no. And I... Right through the chains. It kicked right. So, it yeah, hit. and you can see the confusion because these baskets are built to not have a disc go through the middle. It hit but enough it, chains. On I the think. right side to kick it yes. outside and through. But that's going to be one. And I mean, that's uh, I, I can't mean, I've never seen a disc spit through on a project basket like that. 
I don't know if I've seen it. I can't recall, but that is definitely one that. Yeah, and a lot of the courses really around where we live have them, and it's it's pretty it's dirty. Rare. Yeah, that was pretty dirty. I mean, when they came out, there was videos of Shoestrick doing an X step. Oh, he was onto throwing him, right like, into right it. into him on a cliff. Yeah, you know, just ripping into him. But yeah, oh, it's brutal. That was rough. To continue, Ooh. brutal. Hole 13, par 4, 535 feet. A hole that difficulty comes in the tee shot placement and the height. If you can throw an overstable fairway, skip into be able to see the daylight, you're going to be in a great spot to attack this par 4 for the birdie. Um, but yeah, overstable fairway, maybe a straight mid-range, just trying to continue and kind of match the angle of the hill and go straight at it. This is one of the harder holes that I that you'd hear. expect. And what is this roll? No. What? It's just, it's still going. And the worst reaction, it was a little bit early, oh but gosh. to kick up and perfectly just roll and speed up down the hill. Oh, that's That's going to take him out of the play. Yeah. This looks great. Be a little bit right, though. It's a good kick. It's a great kick. Yeah. Yeah, and it's the play, like I said, I feel like it's just an overstable fairway. We saw it in round one, climbing the hill, putting yeah. yourself in a position to be able to see and attack and have a clean look. This looks good. And a nice. I mean, he might have Comment, a look on the back commentator side. Commentator curse. Yeah, commentator curse. Let's see if Seppo can put it. In a good position. All these drives so far are definitely going to be some scramble shots. Really wanted to get onto that one. Yeah, there's a lot of power behind that. Not sure where it ended up, but it looked like it kicked right. Yeah, if there's a hole that scramble is probably the most difficult. It's this midway through 13 here. That is a great upshot, though. Mm -hmm. From where he was. Oh, for sure. And Seppo going with the forehand roller. Yeah, I mean, there's not much else you can really do. It's going to be hard, though, because there's a lot of trees. you got roots and stuff in the yeah, way. Yeah, definitely the aggressive play trying to get all the way out to the grass. And he does. I mean, I stand corrected. What the heck? That was incredible. Such a good forehand roller touch, knowing the stability of the disc of when it was going to start turning. Yeah. I don't think his foot rotated, his front foot. Yeah. It stuck. It, it looked like it maybe it was a good thing because he just was inside of those trees. So we get to the best drive of the group. Or sorry, this was an upshot. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Turn in the forehand. Pin high. Yeah. Playing close to the OB, but pin high. Mm -hmm. Love a putt. And Yona here with his great upshot to the gap. And the clean forehand. Putting yeah, one of the best. Yeah, one the of basket. the best releases on a forehand. Well, it's so I've, smooth. I've it's so smooth. Yeah. Would love to be able to see the grip that he has on those. I mean, it's it's so, so clean. Seppo just jump putting. If this distance you can get going, you're, you're unstoppable. Yeah, that's like 45, 50. Mm -hmm. Just right. Good height, though. Lucas just inside circle. Yes. Good. It is for birdie. It was his drive. I'm sorry to be corrected there. What a great birdie here on 13. Got the Koti Pizza slow mo for this great putt. Yo, oh, yeah. Straddled, standstill putt, outside circle one. Yeah, going great that footing he trusted. Yeah. So good. Good par for Seppo. 
Yeah, he's scrambling well. There's forehand rollers and things coming out. I mean, no birdies so far, but this is the hardest part of the stretch of the course in this you know, these couple holes, these conditions kind of lessening, but definitely still on the ground. Some interesting ground play. The footing is still pretty weird, but your hands aren't necessarily wet anymore. No, still cold probably. Mm -hmm. Sulla on hik. Oh. Vapari ja maali. Sullakin on hiki. Oh. Parilautu kana ja hotti kastika. Uhkana. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Valitse uusi huuhkana. Siinä on potkua. Kotipizzasta. On to hole 14, par 3, 259 feet. One of the other shortest holes of this course. And we've seen players go over the top and also the forehand play. Yeah, the grenade play is definitely there. The I love the, the grenade gut. play. We did see the grenade come back to kind of just be unlucky, though, when it With hits a roll. and it rolls down mm -hmm. that hill. Wetter conditions, maybe not so much. Maybe it sticks a little bit more. Depends on how how much that, that ground has been able to hold the water. Yeah, the grenade's going to come in, you know, straight up and down. I mean, the power you got to have to throw it over the top of these. And there's the roll, like you said. Yep, the it's, roll's there, but that ground the also the chance of the bounce-in bounce is and there. We did see that in. before. The bounce-in. That is hard, compacted dirt there. Yeah. You want to go into the forehand, just knowing that the grenade maybe isn't a big part of his game. Oh, it gets I mean, a great that is a second great kick. forward kick. Yeah. Disking down to what looks to be a tactic. Oh, and just left where he's going he needed for to more be. of the skip play. Yeah, definitely the lower skip approach. Surprised to not see Seppo go with the grenade or some other top. Usually a pretty tricky player. It comes down to percentages, though. There's only a certain distance, I feel like, like physics-wise, that a grenade can go. So if you have that distance locked in, that height locked in, it's a very practiced shot. You also got to know, like, hey, I don't have that power. Mm -hmm. So Which, That's not a problem for Seppo, but... No, I'm just he, saying, like... Yeah, I mean, pinballs down to could be a weird step-out putt. Yeah. No, I get what you're saying about it, though. I mean, it's a control. It had to carry 259 feet, but it had to carry so far oh, over so those high trees. Over the trees. Good speed control, a little not even giving it a run there. It's smart from Elias. Seppo with maybe some kind of a look. Similar. Yeah, everybody's just laying up, putting the clothes. Yeah, no one worrying about always. it. And the opposite, coming back here for Lucas with a window, full ability to run it. Uphill, mm -hmm. too. Yeah, not really a chance of roll away unless it were to hit and turn back, but best look of the group. Just left. Yeah, just, had the right height. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit too much hyzer angle out of the hand. Your comeback putt for the par. Yeah, and the rest of our card looking at pars as well. Yeah, and Seppo kind of, I mean, plus two here on the back nine. Definitely needed something to get going. So Elias stays clean on the back nine. Yeah, when the conditions are tough, that caddy's a huge, huge benefactor. Let's jump into hole 15, par three, 328 feet, out of bounds the entire way on this left side, natural out-of-bounds on the right, thick trees, and this out-of-bounds 
loops around the back side as well. And you have that large shrub on the right side. The look at Hayden, make sure that's the right thing to say with the, the trees. Um, but it's interesting to see a lot of players go to the backhand here. It kind of climbs the hill with the turnover shot, but the forehand really does kind of bring the out-of-bounds not in play. I think the forehand here, the questionable part of it is footing and off the tee since yeah, it's rained. Right. right. And then you have so much you have to travel uphill. That's mm -hmm. why you see them go with the backhand. Yeah, that backhand nose up can kind of climb the hill a little bit better, the understable disc. Yeah. You're, I mean, you're pretty much safe with the backhand. As long as you um, know as that long understability. As you under, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the error with the backhand, obviously, is you don't put, like, I mean, you're not going to throw an overstable disc no, no, fade no. out, but the error is going to be if you put too much turn on it. Yes. Then you find yourself on that right side and you're blocked off. Yes. Just have to pick and choose your poison. Mm -hmm. And that touch backhand is just such a staple in just a lot like, of these players' ba bags. This one needs to get down. Ooh. It sticks, that long grass. We'll have a look. Be uphill in mid circle two. Yeah, with the forehand distance and, and touch that Elias has, I'm definitely expecting him to put this one close. Big sweep. Yeah, just a little bit too much hyzer. It's the hyzer, but also the, I mean, you got to play with the height there. Yeah. got to get so high above that because you're going uphill. You're mm -hmm. going to match that grade and end up short. Right. Seppo going with the turnover backhand. It's a lot of turn. Yeah, a little bit more I mean, of a direct got on line. on top of the hill, though. Yeah, it's more direct and not really playing with the hyzer flip to turn, but really just the flat to turn shot. Kind of leaning, leaning on whatever shape makes the most sense going up that hill. What are these baskets doing to these guys? No. That was a great, solid putt. Such a good putt from Yona from, from distance, too, kind of to set the, the tone of putting here. And, yeah, like you just said, set the tone. Yeah. What a great putt there from Elias. We saw it in the front nine. Let's go to the Kochi Pizza slow-mo. Mid-circle two, uphill. Oh, yeah. Never a doubt there, just right in the heart from Elias. Great putt. Yeah, it's good to see him pick up some putts after some struggles earlier on, on and nine. just really be able to lock in. The stroke is there, but he's found the grip again. And I mean, he's playing a great back nine so far. Really hoping to continue with three holes to go. Just low for Paiu. Great putt. So confident. Keeping the distance between him and Yona. Yep, and closing the gap to our leader of yeah, Seppo. he's two strokes away. Yep, he's picking up. I mean, he's picked up, what, two strokes in the last four holes? Yes, he has. Yeah. I mean, three strokes. I mean, it's just... Yes, three strokes. Yeah, in the last four. I mean, definitely important to chase down as we're nearing the end of round two, moving to that final round. Keeping it close. Yeah. The whole 16, par 3, 266 feet. You can see a lot of the players throw a mid-range to putter. Just trying to land it close up on the top of this hill here. Not much of, I guess, guardian tree or anything, but you got a tree behind the basket, so you want to land either next to it, left. But if you go right, it's a hill, and you're going to be putting back uphill. For sure. A hole that we talked about in round one where the difficulty really comes in the conditions. Yes. But when the conditions are calm like they are right now, only thing that's really coming into play is the footing off the tee pad. Yeah, and it looks not to be that bad. I mean, yeah. Lucas being able to put it close. Going to the mid-range here, Lukonen. And this back nine has really put on display why he's here on the lead card. I mean, the oh, front nine had, sure. had some nerves, you know, you know, maybe just not really able Settle to lock in. in. But, I mean, this back nine, he's played incredibly clean. 
hit some great putts or some great drives. I mean, some players need time to settle in. Yeah. That's just how they play. Yeah, and once you're in that position more and more and more, you're comfortable on the lead card. And if you're not on the lead card, you're chasing and you have that fight in you to be able yeah. to come back to it. And you want that feeling. You want you want the nerves. You of course. thrive in it. Oh, yeah. You're the best no one, no one wants to be at the bottom and not have those. Oh, of course. But there's a difference of the best players. Yes. They get into these positions and then they're ready to continue. They, they thrive off those situations, mm-hmm. those nerves. You thrive off the momentum. Oh, for sure. Is that going more... Sh- I yeah, thought it was straighter, more straight straighter approach, but definitely an overstable disc. So, can I be the tester? One out. Yeah. From the basket. This is a range where he found success on the front nine, but this back nine, not so, not so much. Oh, just low and right. That's how it's been on this back nine for him. It's just low, right, or you know, it's just barely missing, not getting over the cage. Yeah. When on the front nine, he was banging those putts, and mm-hmm. he was using all of that cage. Yeah, and he's kind of that in between, that hybrid like spin to kind of a push, but yeah. really, when you're, I mean, as a straddle putter myself, like it, it, I know I miss a putt immediately when I don't use my legs. Yep. And you're in that kind of range where it's like, oh, if I was three feet further, I wish I could jump putt. <laughs> you know, um, and it's 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 kind of the the good and the bad of the straddle putt. But Yona making good here on one of the shortest holes in the course is yeah, this he's, is he's you want up. a birdie here. I mean, it's, and Lucas has to get the birdie, but she's close enough. Oh yeah. Closing the gap. I mean, was at one point he had a seven-stroke lead. Yes. And it's closed and now it's, to one. It's going down. I mean, we got a whole another round, but still. Yeah. It's definitely creeping up on and him. I would expect and Vino know, to be right here in the mix as yeah, well. And you know Seppo's thinking about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, as we see, Seppo still tied. Now one, tied for one, first. But, one stroke. Yep. Now tied for first, putting Lucas to third place as we have two holes to play here in round two. Yeah, it really is. I mean, it's such a beautiful property here as they walk hole to hole as we jump into hole 17. So, so many gaps to hit here. Par four, 600 feet, being able to make it through these gaps initially. And so we've also seen the forehand work to kind of be on the right side. And then you're going to want to set up your next shot straight downhill as we continue back towards the final hole in the parking lot. It, this It's the toughest hole on the course. Oh, I would. By how much? It's almost a full stroke. Wow. So, I mean, it's it makes sense. I mean, the difficulty off the tee here and then controlling your placement as well. Like, hitting the gap's one thing. Oh. If that got through. Oh. That was going to be in such a good spot. That was going to be a beauty of a throw. Yeah, and the forehand kind of you're going downhill. You would think the backhand would make more sense, this kind of right-to-left movement. But because you're going downhill and the gaps are left to right, yes. it sets yourself up to this That's Anheuser exactly forehand to say. put you in a great spot for footing as this is a little bit early. Oh no! It's but it's, it's such it's, an understable disc. It's yeah, perfect. Yeah, that was that looked like it was going right for those trees, but right, right oh before my, the secondary tee pad. Oh my gosh, that was beautiful! Wow, what a shot yeah, that, there! From that LAX. did not look like it was going to turn up no. at all. Just when you thought it wasn't ready, <laughs> it turned up. Backhand mid range here for Yona. Oh, putter. The putter? Yeah. I think it was a deeper rim. It's a forward kick, but a backwards Ooh. roll. More of a hyzer approach to the green, but going to be definitely not where he's wanting to be sitting. And Seppo going with the mid-range here. Yeah, this is an old M3. Actually was for the announcement of Prodigy Disc Europe is the stamp. Very, very old disc. Just on the edge. Yeah, a little bit of like kind of roll there, slide at the end, puts him in an interesting position with that tree. I think Yona's going over the top. Yeah, I mean, it looks like that's what he's lining up for, but it may just be a big hyzer. Yeah, he's he going, going over the top. Going over the top. We saw in round one, Tuomas Hutiainen do the same, and just kind of crash into here and hope for a putt. Yeah. Yep. Gonna be a little Doesn't bit shorter to. though. 
I mean, the distance that it got off the off the fairway there. I mean, Zippo doing the same. You got to be happy with that. Yeah. Yeah, with a better look at the basket. Yep. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's it's a death putt. I mean, this is such a big roll though. away. So we'll see how he wants to attack. It's that step putt. Lucas you know. going with the forehand. Forehand, forehand. Shaping it. That may have helped him a lot. Yeah, I think that was going to be turning and put him in a very odd position, but that's a that's a difficult putt to run I'm, with the way that he putts that kind of just I think you see him lay, him lay it up yeah. and not mess with it because of the stroke lead between him and Seppo. Yeah, he knows he's playing well. There's no yeah, reason You got one to, more hole. Exactly. I mean, going into the final round, I'd rather be one one stroke behind than two or three. Yeah. Needed to be a little bit. Oh, it gets oh, a straight wow. skip. Yeah, I was thinking the same. It needed to be maybe more a little left, bit more but, left. But it takes a straight yeah, skip. Yeah, that was nice. And to be able to throw that tactic, that kind of approach putter style disc, I mean, that's such an advantage to control the speed coming into that green compared to the other two players throwing a spike hyzer. Spike you know? Yep. And, and, and you're right. Yeah, just laying it up. Line it up. Not not questioning it. No de No need to give a, an extra stroke when you don't have to. For sure. I think you can see. He was thinking I, about I, it. I thought, he, I, I thought so as well. You saw the knees come the down knees, just a yeah, little just bit. Just a little bit. Uh, I was like, okay, maybe, yeah. maybe. Seppo, knowing that he needs to pick up some strokes, knowing he, he's lost yeah. a lot of his lead. I mean, he's lost all of his lead. He's going to have to first. push this one. Yeah, this is a dangerous putt, but can set the tone for the rest of you know, this tournament. It hits the top. It sits, though. But that was a lot of confidence. It really was. It's always good when you have that confident putt and you're able it's to build on it. It's a scary putt, though. Yeah. Such a scary putt. It's not a like, scary putt when you put it close like this, bringing him back no. to even. Yeah, what he's had a back nine. great back nine. Yeah, Elias, I mean, correcting himself on the nerves. You know, and that's why, the whole like you said earlier, that's yeah. why he's here. You know he's good enough to do it. Right. It's just nerves and a little bit of weather. Mm -hmm. Threw him off. Yeah, stringing it together um, here on the back nine. Luka has been so awesome. I mean, the forehand power he has, yeah, you know, know, those nice just sweeping motion. It's been awesome to watch. I'm interested to see how he's going to attack this final hole. With it being, I mean, with it, that, that 230 feet. Being an island. Like, yeah, it's, it, with OB all around. Yeah, this is finding what is your most comfortable shot. Yeah, and it's, it's it's nerves. I mean, we talked about it in round one. This well, is, is a little is bit more that, difficult. Is that the part that you push and you try to play for the birdie, or you go safe and just land safely? Yeah. And we're on hole 18, par three, 230 feet, and you've got an island hole with OB all around, mm -hmm. and it's all downhill, so speed control. Yep. It's going to be key. Those, being that it rained earlier, too, I mean, those wood chips bring in a little bit more skip than maybe stick. And going for a mid-range. This is a tactic, I think, that four. Yeah, that, that approach. approach. This sticks. Tactic. Yep. Yep, yeah. it does stick. It's great. Just playing something with a wide rim, being able to sit. Yep. Not take a huge skip. I think they're playing not a wide rim, trying to just throw, like, maybe mid-range or so. No, oh, I meant deeper, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. You're good. Stand still here for Lucas. A lot of angle. But playing it short to then hey. check up. That's yeah. yeah. I mean that that's the beauty of a game that we we all we can love. You play different things. Yeah, it's the creativity. You go to a forehand putter, he's he's throwing it short knowing he's gonna forward skip. I mean, it's it's incredible to see what such a short hole can bring. <laughs> so again. So smooth. Almost hitting the stake, though. That would have been insane. But sticking it super close. I like this as a final hole, especially, you know, in round three, of course, I it's going to play that. But that you've had your – by this, this point in your round – This is a moving point. If you don't oh, get this – Right. And, I mean, you're exhausted. The nerves of the, – everyone's there watching, especially on a lead card. You're the last card to finish. Exactly. You know, everyone's watching you throw this short, touchy hole. All about angle control and speed. And Seppo just puts it 
and the next to yep. the best. It hits the Lincoln Logs, and he is a tap in. Everyone here looking for birdie. Very birdie. Yeah, really solid round. I mean, in the rain, minus four, you know, very different from what he shot. One behind Seppo. Yeah. I mean, got to be happy with that, with one bogey on the back nine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is actually Seppo's first birdie look. Yes, it is. But for four in a row here, Elias Lukanen. Yeah, and a player I'm, I'm excited to watch in the future. Way to turn it around. Yeah, to come back. I mean, bogey-free back nine. I mean, what a difference, you know, being able to calm the nerves. We talked about it a lot so far, but hats off to you, brother. That's an incredible way to finish round two here. And he's not far behind. No, not at all. I mean, it's definitely doable to chase and keep pushing towards the top of the leaderboard. Yep, and Lucas and Yona, you know, that two-stroke separation. And one stroke between Seppo and Lucas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm excited to see this round three and how they're going to attack it. Hopefully the conditions stay calm. Let's check in with our card. You know, this minus three, minus four, pretty standard for these conditions, but checking with the I mean, leaderboard. still not bad, though. I mean, yeah, but we have from a leaderboard the conditions from that we've seen before. Vile Aokas with the minus eight, my, the hot round, oh jumping seven my. spots. And Vino Makala jumping three spots with a minus seven. seven. And, I mean, our lead card going to this final up round. And it's been changing up and down, up yeah. and down. I mean, we're one one stroke, two strokes between the entire lead card. It's going to be a blast. Yeah. Be sure to if, like and subscribe. Especially if the rain can stop. Right. Turn those notifications on because we're going to bring you round three, front nine. Here soon. Yeah. My name is Mitch Phillips. And I'm Hayden Ricard. And we are with Parked Podcast. Be sure to follow us on Instagram. And we're going to see you for an intense final round here at Turkey. I'm ready for it. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah, if we can see this guy right here continue, get the putter really going, but it's going to be a battle. Yeah. yeah we'll see you on the final round.